In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer the question, are stocks ready to flip back into uptrend mode? We'll be moving very, very quickly. Please feel free to use the pause button on your video player. Last week, we talked about the credit market said 11 days after the peak in each one of these cases. This really didn't look too bad. The spread between IEF and JNK relative to the spread here in February following the peak. Five trading days later, better, worse, or about the same on the left side of the screen? The answer is worse relative to last week. Treasury bonds, IEF did pop back into positive mode, but this spread, while quite a bit higher than last week's spread, is still significantly lower than the spread looking at the same instruments 16 trading days after the February 19th peak. Similar situation if we look at TLT relative to JNK. You can see this week the spread did widen. That's concerning a little bit. But the spread here 16 trading days out is still significantly lower than the spread here. Stock market went up on Friday. JNK IEF down on Friday. JNK TLT down on Friday. And both of them down significantly for the week. Volatility Index, February 17th. This is somewhat of our reference point or line in the sand area here. We really haven't seen anything yet that's particularly alarming. However, the VIX is still at elevated levels. Somewhat of a mixed bag here. This isn't particularly a good look here. But in terms of the trend strength, look where price is relative to the moving averages. Compare that to this plunge here, this plunge here, and this plunge here. September 10th, internet versus bonds. Bad news is we've had some weakness. Good news is we've still held above the highs from Q1 of this year. If you're a stock market bull, all things being equal, you'd prefer to see this ratio move in this direction. If you're a bear, you would prefer to see a look like this. Triple Q's, September 17th. This is the gap that we were watching. Intraweek this week, we dropped below that gap several times and closed above the gap. Back on September 8th, we said the S&P 500 was approaching this large gap here from the February decline. Similar situation this week. We dropped below the small gap, early August gap that we talked about last week. We dropped below this level here intraweek. At the end of the week, we closed above both, with the exception of closing this gap here, which may act as potential resistance. Last week, we said if bad things happen, we still had numerous forms of potential support below the S&P 500. Close September 25th, some good, some bad. The good, we did go back and retest this June high here, can see this is a breakout here and somewhat of a retest look we went back and tagged that general area and bounced that's the good news the bad news is this is still an intermediate term downtrend until proven otherwise from a glass half full perspective we referenced this june high during the trading session this is 10 30 a.m as this picture it was put out on the 21st which was monday and we did end up holding that level. It's still a relevant level as of the close on Friday. Bonds versus stocks. This is the chart we covered on September 10th. Notice below the downward sloping trend line. This is where we were in the 10th. The 17th, we had been moving above the line a little bit. This is where we were in the 10th. This is where we were close Wednesday this week, the 23rd make an argument that this is a left shoulder this is a head type look and this is a right shoulder from a psychology perspective this would be the bad news the better news is not necessarily good news we did go back and tag this line here what once acted as support possibly could act as support again now that we're back above the line this could either be a retest look or a failed breakout look closed right on the line. There's really no possible way that we can say the chart on September 23rd looked better relative to the look on September 10th. 
Same thing with these stats here. These stats leaned bullish on the 17th. This week, TLT beat SPY by 1.54%. It did lag XLK, but it trounced RSP equal weight S&P 500 by 3.72%. Home builders versus bonds. Still looks decent. Caveat, this is a market leader, and typically, if it's going to fail, it would be one of the last charts to fail. You want indecisive? We have indecisive. Close September 25th, 2020. Closed right on this line that we've been looking at, QQQ relative to gold. This look here, somewhat of a cup and handle look, tells us to keep an open mind about a break in this direction. But right now, this is very, very indecisive. Similar situation here, glass half full. You can make an argument that as of the close on September 25th, once again, we close right on the indecisive line. Popped above it a little bit this week. Glass half full, we're still above the line. Glass half empty, this is still very, very sketchy and indecisive. Any improvement on this front this week? This chart is dated September 10. A little bit, but nothing significant. But you could make an argument that this coiling look here similar to the coiling look in here, and then good things did happen. Equal weight technology, which has been a laggard relative to the growth and tech leaders, did give up the June high. Also, extremely noteworthy, this is an intermediate term downtrend until proven otherwise. It may prove it in this direction, but it hasn't done so yet in a meaningful way. The last thing it did was make a lower low, there's no significant higher high here, nor a break of a trend line. Equal weight tech relative to bonds, IEF, in June after the plunge, we held this upward sloping orange trend line. This is a higher low relative to this low. This looks worse. Is it possible that this is a failed bearish breakdown and we're going to skyrocket in this direction? Absolutely, positively, yes, it's possible. This is still an intermediate term downtrend. Stocks versus bonds, September 11th. This upward sloping trend line here has been taken out. We are now well below it. We also went below the June high intra-week. This is a daily chart. That's the bad news. The good news is we did poke our head back above this line here. Orange box means still an intermediate term or shorter term downtrend until proven otherwise. That's the bad news. Could have said the same thing here. So this market just needs to prove something in a bullish manner if that's what's going to happen. September 11th, growth versus bonds. Notice we're above these green lines here on September 11th. This chart looks worse today. This is a new low here. But we can make an argument that this look here before this rally looks similar. It's bad that we're below all these lines. The good news is we're still above the June closing high and still quite a bit above it. This is growth IWF relative to TLT. This is a common theme. This is the bounce on Friday. Still has work to do. Still a short-term downtrend. Still below this upward sloping trend line and still in this gap here. This is constructive, but we need to see more in terms of probabilities moving in this direction. Earlier in the month, we said if this does not hold, it's possible this area here could act as potential support. Here's the area here, same area with the pink box. We came down, went into the pink box, tagged it, and closed above it. Also extremely noteworthy, above a flattish to downward sloping 200-day moving average. Simply another reference point. Orange box, work to do. Without going into too much detail here, for now, it is good news that the S&P 500 stayed above this dotted red line here. We also have a red diamond below and the target, probabilistic target, moved up significantly this week. Before we were looking at 3,600, now we're looking at 3,907. 
That would be about an 18% move from Friday's session. S&P futures, quite a bit more conservative. A similar probabilistic target, hypothetical target, comes in at 3527. How is this helpful? It helps us keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes. We learn something if we move into this area here. The longer we stay there, the more we learn. We learn something if we clear this general area in here. The longer we stay above it, the more we learn. And this helps us if we're having trouble keeping an open mind about much better than expected outcomes. If you're a client, we have a game plan for all the major outcomes. A move in this direction, a move in this direction, and sideways consolidation. Do plans always work? No, they don't, but you're much better off having them. S&P 500, this is the June high. This is the bottom in June, so this is a rally here. This A to B move here using high-low close prices, we came back and tagged the 61.8% retracement intraday on Thursday of this week. So far, we are holding above it. If we hold a move in this direction, you can say that this is a 100% to be expected and normal correction within the context of an existing uptrend. If we give this up, it starts to tell us that we should be open to increasing bearish probabilities relative to a possible trend reversal. Somewhat interesting, these pink trend lines were drawn well before we added the 200-day moving average on the S&P 500 to this chart. They come in around the same general area here. We also have a gap here. The 200-day, always good to know where that is, comes in at 3107, which is quite a bit below the close on September 25th, which is 3298. Also noteworthy, we can run fibs on the entire A to B move. This is an uptrend. So far, the retracement well above the 38.2% level based on this move from here to here. So far, this looks like a 100% normal and to be expected retracement within the context of an ongoing uptrend. That's what it looks like today. That doesn't mean that's what it is. But the fact that it looks like that does help us assess probabilities. FIBs, 200-day moving averages, charts, none of them can predict the future. They simply help us assess the odds of good things happening relative to the odds of bad things happening. Gold had a rally off this low in March, A to B move. We came back. We're above the 38.2 and right on this upward sloping trend line here. Charts like this are a little bit concerning for gold, helping us keep an open mind. TLT relative to gold, the U.S. dollar, IEF relative to gold. Is it possible that this look in here looks like this look in here? Yes, it's possible. So far, all we've done here is break a downward sloping trend line. That would be step one, more work to do. This is the chart we opened the video with last week and we'll close with it this week. Are we getting ready to resume the mountain climb? All of this still applies. There's no question that some bad things have happened this week, and some of these charts look significantly worse than they did two or three weeks ago. And there's no question that the big picture, broader picture, longer-term picture, has yet to sustain a body blow. How do you know when you're keeping an open mind about a wide range of outcomes? When over the last few weeks, you have sell orders queued up for stocks at the end of the day, you have buy orders queued up at the end of the day, and you have buy orders queued up for bonds. That allows for maximum flexibility, even if something changes in the last 20 minutes. Is that something we do every day? Absolutely, positively, no. That's something we do when the charts are near possible inflection points. And as we know, the best way to use all of this is to head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, 
or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.